Hey, you guys know that when I do a video, it's usually on a pretty good topic. <laughs> I don't do them very often, but when I do them, they're, they uh, are definitely around a topic that if you're in the sim building business, you would like to know. And so I invite you to subscribe to this channel by hitting the subscribe button. And as I do these videos, it'll help you in your sim build, I'm sure. So today, guys, we're going to be talking about potentiometers, okay? And what a potentiometer is, is it's a resistor that will regulate how much voltage goes through it based upon how, how you turn it, right? And these are analog, they're not digital, which means flight simulator softwares do not recognize them. MobiFlight will not recognize it, FSUIPC will not recognize it, and yet I use them in my simulator. And I'm going to talk about how today on this video, how I do that, how I use them, and how I'm able to transfer the signals into Flight Simulator. Now, if you think about a guitar, for instance, that when you turn up the volume on the guitar or you turn the knob, that's what's happening is that that resistor inside is regulating that voltage that goes out and that's what's happening in here as you th this is my flaps and as I turn my flaps or switch through them all it's doing is it's going through it right here with the set screw and it's turning those turning that potentiometer and as it's doing that it's creating this analog signal now over here this is using a linear potentiometer and what they are is they're a little bit different you'll, you'll you'll notice if I show you down here you'll see a rod that goes down into a box well when I turn this that rod goes you'll see it right there you'll see that rod going down into that box and then you'll see it coming out of that box and as it moves through that box it's doing the same thing as a resistor it's regulating the voltage it's going through now, potentiometers, they only have three wires in most cases, and the way that it works is you have one that will carry the voltage. In, in our situation of building sims, it's a five-volt wire. You'll have one wire that's a ground, and then you'll have your third wire, which is that signal that it's producing on the output. And so we have to convert these to a digital signal in order to make it work with Flight Simulator. Uh, um, or prepared or whatever flight simulator you're using. Um, again, MobiFlight will not recognize these. Um, also, FSUIPC will not recognize these, and the flight simulator itself will not recognize these. And it's interesting, in all my videos, I tend to hack. I love hacking <laughs> the system to get things to work, and you'll see that I did that on the aircraft video where I show you how to access your LVARs of your uh, of your uh, airplanes and then how to write Lewis scripts to basically force them through mobile flight and FSUIPC even if it's not an FS, FS, I, I, FSU IPC FSUIPC aircraft <laughs> Ugh, that's a lot to say but uh, anyhow you can see those on my other videos but this one the challenge was real simple how do we get analog equipment to be recognized by the flight simulator. And the answer to that lies doo -doo -doo -doo, right here. This, guys, is an Arduino Micro. Now, this will not work on the other Arduinos. You cannot do this on a Uno or a, or a Mini or a Mega. I believe you can do it on a Leonardo, uh, Leonardo, but for the sake of this video, we're just going to use the micro. So the micro is very small, and what's cool about it is you can actually load a library onto this thing that will make your computer recognize it as a joystick controller. Now, isn't that cool? You, you plug this thing in, and all of a sudden it becomes a joystick controller, and what's neat about that is you have these pins on here. And let me just switch over to, yes, this side here. You'll see these pins. And let me just change my view here up close. Um, let me see if you can see those. But it says A0, A2, A3, A4, and A5. 
those are analog pins and this will actually allow you to push an analog signal into it and then it converts that signal into a digital signal isn't that cool and you'll notice these two wires here this represents my 5 volt wire right there and my ground wire so those so you really only need three wires so just like that uh, potentiometer there has three wires one goes to the 5 volt one goes to the ground and the other one goes to an analog pin and that's all you need to get this thing going um, let me go ahead and switch this back I'm gonna show you um, real quick I'm gonna I'm gonna try something new here but I'm gonna show you how this works um, to get it configured so what you would have to do is you'd have to download the latest Arduino software and I'm using 1.8.10 and I'd recommend going to the Windows App Store and um, and doing the Windows Store it's I believe it's 1.8.42.0 and what this does in either one just use the latest version is you have to first install the joystick library into this so when you open up your Arduino you're gonna first go up here and you're gonna go to tools you're gonna make sure you selected the right port that it's connected to and then you have to go over here and select the correct board but just when you do that doesn't mean that you have everything needed you have to install a library onto this and so what we have to do is we have to load on the library file for joystick and I'm gonna put a description of where you download that but it's pretty simple to install it you just come over here to sketch and then you're gonna go down here to include library and if you move it over to the directory structure where it needs to be it'll it'll automatically appear in this list here let me just see if I can get this and you'll see it down there and it'll say joystick and you select that and it actually installs the library and you can do that by hitting add zip library and you the file that you download you would actually click on this to install it and then you go down here and select it and when you do that it's going to install the library into Arduino so and then once that library is installed I'm going to give you the code right below this video that you would you would use to make this work but basically it's going to initialize the joystick and it's got three axes X Y and Z and as those as those move uh, up and down uh, it's going to register that and it's going to assign those out to the you'll see right there these are the analog pin one analog pin that's zero one two so I've got three analog pins here that I'm using and uh, and then it's assigning those pins to an X Y or Z axis now what I have also in inside this file is I have pin out buttons here and this is because my yoke I mean my uh, <laughs> my throttle has different buttons on it right and you'll see that and so forth that I need to assign in addition to just the axis moving you know X Y and Z and when you do this you would then upload it to to the Arduino micro and then what that's going to do at that point in time is that's going to have your computer recognize it as a game controller so you're going to see if you type go down here and you type in game controller right there you'll see set up a US game controller USB game controller it'll open up this right here and you can select Arduino uh, micro and then you can click on the properties and when you click on the properties you get this window here and this will allow you to test it to make sure it's working so when you throttle this up you'll see that you'll see it move see that move right there and I'll do the other one here you'll see that one moving down and then I have another one right here where I can move it in and out and that one uh, and so 
With that being said, I've also got these little highlighted buttons here. And you'll notice when I click it, see that? That is tied directly to that. So what I'm doing is this, this is going to one of the pinouts, right? This is going to one of the pinouts. And then the throttle movement from no throttle to full throttle is going to one of the analog pins. And what's cool is, remember I said you only have three. So I'm going to have one go to the ground wire. This is kind of a hard to hold this at the same time. One's going to go to the five volt and then one's going to go to the analog pin. And as you move this back and forth, it's going to read the range. And traditionally, you might have to go into your flight simulator in the past and assign 10 positions onto this throttle. But when you do it this way, you could have a thousand positions on this throttle. So the entire movement of the throttle forward and back can be recorded in a series of numbers from, you know, going up to a thousand different points. And now how I added this, once I have this working and it's showing up inside here as a game controller, I'll show you how I added it to uh, prepared. So I go down here and I'm just gonna unpause this for a minute and I'll show you it working. Like if I go like this, you'll see the throttle go up. If I go like that, you'll see the throttle go up, right? And how I was able to make that work and actually configure it into the game itself is I go over here and I edit. And this is one that we often forget about, but I went to the actual game options right here and I go down here to axis assignments and I go down here to my throttle, which is right here, engine one throttle and engine two throttle axis. And up here, you'll see it recognized my Arduino micro card. So I'm able to just simply click on this and move the actual throttle and it assigns the X or Y uh, axis on it. So that's how simple it is. And then I selected this reverse so it's going in the right direction and I hit OK and that's all it is to configure the throttle. Now, when it came time to do the actual flaps, that was a lot more challenging because you have all these different positions, right? 45, 30, and then it goes down. Well, um, in order to accomplish that, I actually went into FSUIPC and I went over here to Access Assignments and then I selected, I went ahead and moved it here and when I when I adjusted the, the, the lever on it and it actually moved, it, it assigns out here and then I did the send to FS as normal. And then I selected on the left hand side here, uh, flaps. And just by doing that, it automatically recognizes each one of those step points and, uh, and, and made my flaps work. I have my flaps disconnected right now, otherwise I would show you, but, um, but that's how simple it was to add the flaps. So once again, guys, we have done, the impossible. <laughs> uh, you said it before when we when we had aircraft that didn't support FSUIPC and we were able to make it work uh, writing those Lewis scripts and LVARs using Moby Flight. Uh, now we've actually got analog equipment, these resistors here uh, that are not supposed to work with the simulator technically uh, because they're not digital and we're able to convert them into digital and we're able to send them to the actual computer and make our throttles work. All right, let me unpause this and we'll just throttle this bad boy up. You see that? Very nice, and that's how simple it is. And then, of course, these buttons here, you assign these out on the pins. Again, I'll just show you this, this file. Um, you'll see, and I'll just kind of go close. I have three, an X, Y, and Z. And then right here is my pins. These are the pins for the buttons. And then going down, let me scroll down. That's for the buttons. And then I, down here I have my access, and I have the uh, A0, A1, and A2 right there. Those are my analog pins. 
and then down here it sets it. So that's how simple the script is. I'll put it in the description along with the library that you need to download to use it. And then just wire it up and might take you a few tries to get all your wires correct, but <laughs> it's usually only three wires, so it should be pretty simple. But you should be able to be running any of your uh, potentiometers, uh, whether however you set them up, into your simulator, which is pretty darn cool. Hey guys, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Uh, same with my other videos. It helps uh, this video get ranked up in YouTube so that other people that are dealing with these issues or problems will be able to find the answers that they're looking for. So uh, we'll help one another get our simulators built. Thank you again, and I hope you guys have a wonderful day flying or building your simulators.